In this video, I'm going to show you whether CrossFit is good or bad for you. What's up guys? Carlo Macapinlock here from NewbieFitnessAcademy.com. I help busy professionals look good naked so they can feel more confident and get the most out of their lives. Okay, before we get started, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe to my channel so you don't miss out on videos like this. Okay, I want to start things off by saying that moving your body through exercise is literally one of the best things you can do for your health and fitness. It's literally like a miracle drug. It helps with fat loss, it builds your muscles, it could relieve stress, it helps you live longer, it helps you sleep, it relieves depression, it alleviates pain, and it could even help with cognitive function. If you're doing that, then you're already ahead of the game. Enter the global fitness phenomenon called CrossFit. CrossFit has definitely gained a cult-like following over the last decade or so, and I'm sure you've heard of it, or somebody that does CrossFit has talked nonstop about it. It's not just a fad, it's here to stay. According to a recent report by The Numbers, CrossFit is possibly the biggest fitness trend in the world. In 2017 alone, CrossFit has 13,000 gyms in more than 120 countries, up from just 13 in 2005. So it's blown up quite a bit with no sign of it slowing down anytime soon. If we go to their site, CrossFit is defined as, they call it the CrossFit Simulus, constantly varied high intensity functional movement coupled with meat and vegetables, nuts and seeds, some fruit, little starch, and no sugar also known as the paleo diet, by the way, and prepares you for the demands of a healthy, functional, independent life and provides a hedge against chronic disease and incapacity. That definitely sounds like something that people can get behind with. I'm all for it 100%. CrossFit gyms are set up with workouts that change daily and contain variety to keep its members on its toes. CrossFit prides itself by using functional movements that aim to increase individual work capacity and is applicable to other sports and activities. It's kind of the jack of all trades of fitness. So if you join a box that's a slang for a CrossFit gym, the workouts are already taken care of for you. All you literally have to do is show up. CrossFit is such a polarizing force in the fitness industry because it kind of goes against the conventional way of exercise, but you can't deny the results that it's produced. One quick search on Instagram and you'll see some athletes that are in phenomenal shape from doing CrossFit. Then things get taken up a notch at the CrossFit Games where they crown the fittest on earth for both men and women. It's quite the spectacle of fitness if you haven't seen it yet. Needless to say, CrossFit has turned working out into a social and even tribal or cult-like identity. CrossFit has dubbed itself as the sport of fitness. But just like anything, it's not perfect. There's definitely pros and cons to doing it. I've personally been doing it since 2012 and it turned me from an overweight desk jockey to a national level weightlifter. So it works pretty well. Now, one of the best things that CrossFit has done and what makes it so popular is it has integrated the ever so popular functional fitness philosophy as its core value, but because of the inclusion of highly technical Olympic weightlifting movements and social pressure to perform in training as if it's a competition, and we'll talk about these individually in a second here, fair or not, it's gotten a bad rap for producing injuries. And that's where the endless memes and CrossFit fail videos are born. One quick search on Google and you're flooded with CrossFit fail videos. To be fair, a lot of those people in those videos are not supervised and are just fucking around on their own, or they do some stupid shit and they call it CrossFit but it still happens. You can't deny that fact. And while injuries are a part of life for professional athletes, they don't need to be a part of life for the average Joe who's just trying to look good shirtless. So let's talk about the pros and cons of CrossFit and whether it's right for you. Let's start with the pros. Number one, CrossFit workouts are awesome because they're constantly varied and they're challenge-based workouts. One day you'll be running and maybe moving a kettlebell. The next day you'll be doing some weightlifting. On other days, you'll be doing some skipping and rowing. Other days, you'll be doing some gymnastics. Or maybe you'll do a combination of all those things. You never know what's coming. Number two, metabolic workouts or Metcon for short, the stuff that CrossFit is really popular for, elicit awesome physiological responses in your body compared to your traditional cardio workout, for example. Research shows that Metcon workouts can provide the same overall health benefits of longer duration cardio and that it's far more effective for fat loss. It's been shown to simulate the production of human growth hormone or HGH for short, and some people refer to HGH as the real fountain of youth. Check out my video about human growth hormones and how awesome it is if you want to know more about it. Number three, CrossFit promotes teamwork and community. This might be the biggest reason why CrossFit has been so successful. It's more than just a workout. It's actually kind of a lifestyle. Anybody who's tried CrossFit or has been to a CrossFit gym can attest to this. In workouts, CrossFitters compete with and motivate each other at the same time. The amazing thing is the last person to finish the workout usually gets the loudest cheers. And then everyone hangs out afterwards and talk about the workout and how hard it was. And that creates a bonding experience for a lot of people. Number four, CrossFit works for everyone. 
One of the biggest things that stops a lot of people from trying CrossFit is that it looks super intimidating. But that couldn't be further from the truth. CrossFit is infinitely scalable. If you go to the Red CrossFit Gym, they'll have scaling options for every workout from the elite all the way to the out of shape first timer. Number five, CrossFit will push you to your limit. And this is kind of a double-edged sword. On one side, you can definitely take your fitness to new heights. But on the other side, if you push too hard in a CrossFit workout, or any workout for that matter, the likelihood of you getting injured skyrockets. Even CrossFit founder Greg Glassman recognizes this risk. It can kill you, he said in a 2005 interview. I've always been completely honest about that, end quote. So take that for what it's worth. Now, this would be a completely biased video if I didn't talk about the cons of CrossFit because just like other fitness programs out there, it's not perfect. So let's talk about the ugly side of it. Con number one, CrossFit became really popular for having constantly varied workout, but it's kind of gotten bastardized lately. The problem is it's kind of become this thing lately where people try to do a single movement for as many reps as they can or do a workout for as short amount of time as possible. And they push to the limit because they think they're getting fit and everything's great. The problem when people get into that kind of training and mentality is good form tends to suffer and every workout becomes a near-death experience because you're just going all out, balls to the wall, every single time. There's a time and place to go all out, but not every day. Number two, a big part of CrossFit is the inclusion of highly technical Olympic weightlifting movements. The thing is, Olympic weightlifting is a sport on its own for a reason. Now, the amount of introduction and training that CrossFit gyms provide to its members is different for each gym, but people usually tend to get exposed to these highly technical movements far too soon without proper training. And that's where things start to go sideways real fast. There are multiple signature CrossFit workouts out there where Olympic weightlifting gets programmed for high reps and it just gets completely bastardized and people blow out their shoulders before they even get any traction on their fitness goals. One quick visit at your local CrossFit competition and you'll see an endless assault of cringeworthy lifts being performed. CrossFit might be the only sport out there where people are rewarded for close enough. That's not good. Number three. Depending on which CrossFit gym you go to, the classes can get too big and you won't get the proper TLC that you need. CrossFit is a business at the end of the day and the requirement to open your own CrossFit gym is to take a weekend course and pay the $3,000 licensing fee in case you're wondering. That's not a very high ceiling. That's why you see so many CrossFit gyms popping up left, right, and center. If you're new to CrossFit and you need a lot of help and guidance, maybe you have a previous injury that needs special attention, and you don't get the proper coaching, that's where things get off the rails real fast. And if the workout of the day calls for some high repetition weightlifting, you have no idea what you're doing, you're probably, most likely, gonna injure yourself eventually. Number four, the death before DNF mentality. DNF stands for did not finish, by the way. And I mentioned this earlier, how CrossFit will push you to your limits. And going all out and finishing the workout by hook or by crook is kind of part of the CrossFit culture. So you get people that don't scale the workout properly, whether it's because of their own ego, or they don't get the proper coaching because the class is too big. You get people always trying to do the prescribed workout on the board because of social pressure instead of making it work for themselves to suit their fitness level. And that's how injuries happen. This 2013 study looked at the frequency of injury in CrossFit athletes during routine training. Of the 132 people who responded to the survey, 97, nearly three quarters reported getting hurt during a CrossFit workout. Now, I have to admit that's a pretty small sample size, but three quarters is still a pretty alarming stat. Listen. There are great personal trainers and there are some bad ones at your local commercial gym. I've seen some personal trainers make people do the weirdest shit and I'm like, what the fuck is that? Much like there are great CrossFit gyms with great coaches that gets people great results and there are also some bad ones giving CrossFit a bad rap. This video isn't meant to hate on CrossFit. I actually love it. I've been doing it since 2012 and I don't plan on stopping anytime soon. But it's meant to look at it from both sides. I honestly think that the whole CrossFit causes injury thing is a little overblown because at the end of the day, you're responsible for your own actions. I mean, nobody's forcing you to do all this crazy stuff that CrossFit is known for. The bottom line is that CrossFit can be an unbelievably effective strength and conditioning program that can get you into the best shape of your life. It can also introduce you to an awesome community of like-minded people, hence the cult-like status. Seriously, check out your local box and you'll see exactly what I mean. It's what keeps people coming back. But just like with anything in life, you have to be smart. Use your own discretion about what you should and shouldn't do if you end up trying it. If it doesn't feel right, don't do it. Remember, it's just training. It shouldn't feel like a near-death experience every time you exercise. You're just working out at the end of the day. You don't need to kill yourself at the gym. I'm all for voluntary hardship, but not to the point of injury. If you're going to do CrossFit, make it work for yourself. Listen to your body and know your limits. Do your research. 
find a good CrossFit gym with experienced coaches, and it might just be the thing that gets you into the best shape of your life. Okay, the next question then becomes, how are you actually supposed to eat if you want to lose weight? Because let's be honest, 80% of your body composition goals is determined by your diet. You can't just freestyle this part. Do you have a proven plan that you can follow? To help you with that, I want to give you a free copy of my Lean Body Blueprint. This is how I melted all the fat around my stomach and turned it into a six pack without going in a crazy diet or wasting hours at the gym. It's a simple four step process specifically designed for busy professionals and it's the exact same blueprint that I teach all my private coaching clients and they've all gone to see some amazing results. If you want to be the next success story, then download your free copy of the Lean Body Blueprint right now. There's going to be a link in the description box. Just click on it, type in your email and I'll send it to you right away. All right, that's all I've got. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and share it with your friends. Please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. I post a new video every Friday and hey, comment below the video if you agree or disagree with the pros and cons I just mentioned. All right, I'll see you in the comment section. Virtual high five.